Hello, good morning. Hello, how are you? So your name is uh, Constantinos. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I go by uh, Kostas. Are you a Greek dissident? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. I do have some friends when I do study in PhD program from Greeks, Greece, and then uh, the name is Didis. <laughs> a lot of syllabus. So I recognize this name, look like it's a Greek name. <clears throat> okay, we actually don't have other students coming in yet. So any questions so far? I asked some questions about uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the term projects. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so what are other examples besides the three examples? We have we have we have three projects, right? The first two are normal uh engineering type projects. So project one, two, we do have the guideline and then doing sorting or some uh tree. Okay, that's fine. The first two projects fine. The last one is uh, second half of the semester. You can start it now if you like, okay, for the term project. And you take the most point. And the term project actually is an open project. We don't uh, assign any topic for you. Okay. But given the guideline is like anything related to programming language course will be acceptable. So what, what is related to this uh, programming language course is you need to do any kind of language translation as long as you work on a project of any kind of translation that we consider to be a project related to programming language. So that would be acceptable. Is that okay? Okay. So so that three, three project one is called, uh, let's see, let me put another note, okay, for the term project. These three are suggested programs. So first one, if you work on a scheme interpreter, of course, this one is an interpreter. So this one related to language, there's no problem, right? Second one, you work on a single instruction uh, assembler. That's also language translation. That's between assembly and uh, uh, and uh, machine code, right? And this one, one instruction architecture. So you are mimicking a machine now with only one instruction. But this one basically is to design a assembler. But this one is lower a lower level compared to the first one. First one is high level language to machine code. This one is assembly to machine code, right? So these are different level, but it's still a language translation. So one is a geo visualizer. This one is some kind of image block or graphic block translated to geo JSON object. So the translation of app to, to OOP object. Okay, so this is also a language translation. So let's see, mm, these are these are the suggested or uh, uh, if you don't have other project idea, these are okay. Let me talk about some project that some student uh, worked on before. Uh, from Lewis University, and I consider that it's a very really good uh, uh, example of programming language is like, okay, someone work on English to most code translator. And is that a language translation? Yes, it's a language translation. It translates from a language to uh, to to most code. So in a way, if you work on another translator that translates English to sign code, a sign language, or some people who is uh, disabled. Is that okay? That's okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I see. Or you translate English to that language that someone who put on the door so that some people who uh, cannot watch, cannot see anything, okay? The blind people who can touch the touch, if you can do that, that's also a language translation. So here we do not limit you of what kind of translation you should do. No, there's no such limit. As long as you can translate from one language to the other, it is considered to be a legal project for us. 
But if you work on something that's not related to us, even though it's very fancy, say you work on something, some like something like a, a what work on a machine learning model. Is that language translation? If no language translation, then it's not. If you work on natural language processing and you translate English to Spanish or something, then that's okay. You have to depend on whether you focus on translation or not, okay? So let's go back to uh, this uh, main idea or main purpose of this course. What are we trying to learn here? Okay, this is programming language. Last week I talked about this uh, syllabus already, okay? So this course programming language is sitting right here. You're starting from your Java 1, Java 2, or C++ 1, C++ 2, or Python 1, Python 2 and then move on to DSA, this, this, uh, data structure and algorithm. And so you know about some trees, some array, some uh, map, okay, whatever data structure you learn, right? And then algorithm. And then you move on to the language tr uh, translation scheme and then compiler. So usually compiler and programming language, maybe some university are in the one course. We are in separate course, but the main idea here is to do translation. So we use the textbook, uh, even though not exactly the same, but I use this textbook as the main idea. This course we call it is structure and the interpretation of computer programs as our main theme in this programming language course. So we do teach you compilation, language interpretation, and the language par paradigms and language features in this course, okay? And then yes. that actually is to introduce how to do uh, the topic of the structure and interpretation of computer programs. And how important is this language translation? I would say right now is the most, 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 most important uh, topic in the industry, okay? Even the fact right now, the most important uh, advance of the technology is machine learning and AI, right? So machine learning and AI, you do have a lot of problem that's in what? In financial war or high frequency uh, trading, or you may have a image recognition problem, or you may have a natural language processing, Okay, let's look at the image process, uh, image uh, recognition program. You get large volume of the images, say JPEG. You put it into a machine learning and AI program. And the end result will be yes or no maybe a Boolean answer about whether this person is Eric or not. Say, this is my photo, okay? So that actually is a machine learning, based on the machine learning. Or I given them a some print, fingerprint, and then the machine learning model provide yes or no, it is uh, Eric or not, okay? Or I use a speech, I talk, and then whether this a machine learning algorithm decided it's a male or female speaker. So basically this is a large volume of data compression and large volume of the information format translation. I see. Is that okay? So, so this would be, so this would be So a that's a, that's a look at the natural language processing. The first step you should do tokenization of your natural language processing and then build up your grammar tree and then translate to Spanish, right? So, right. Step. so, so that's the kind of the, so we learn programming language because we want to know about how language translation is done, how language structure being destructured and uh, restructured to a new language. And the language can be image to English, that's OCR, article character recognition. Can be a image to a sample features, that's image feature extraction, right? 
can yes. be a language from English to Spanish, that's in a language translation, right? So we don't limit that, but uh, we basically, okay, this course, I think mostly still working on the natural language processing or tokenization, okay? Because we are not teaching you the image part. So the language translation usually is still a text, text language to another text language, okay? And then the term project, as long as you do some sort of translation, I don't care. Most code, okay. Uh, sign language, okay, whatever. Okay. Whatever you believe that you, so within this uh, 16 week, you are, you are provided an opportunity to go through the every stage of language translation and language speech definition. Then you apply this knowledge to a domain that you feel comfortable to do language translation. But you may not pick a super, super typical language, say English to Spanish translation. That may be too hard. But if you pick something that what I say most call that that should be manageable, right? Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Or uh, you do some sort of super super uh, secret and safe uh, encoder, that is also okay, as long as you have special kind of the language translation. Okay, is that is that clear? clear? Yeah, I think that makes sense. So like. Uh, Mm -hmm. We do here like to turn the image into a uh, you know, like ML. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you were not like that would be an example of a doable project. Yeah. So so the purpose is like we want you to be uh, uh, focused on studying and study hard for language translation. Then you find a domain field that you can uh, apply your knowledge to. That's the main idea. And then you you there is a proposal you need to propose. Uh, then we, we wish you can complete the idea of what are you going to do. And then you try to put it in the format so you can convince your future manager or your future boss to grant you the project and give you some funding. Okay, that's the whole purpose. You practice after you graduate, you may work on in a, some company and you may uh, need to actually win the budget from your manager. In that case, what kind of proposal will work? That's what we want you to practice right now. That's a proposal stage. And then the end result, we have the term project. You need to have presentation, written report, and the technical file. You need to submit them. Then you need to uh, tell me what you have done. Main focus is what you have done, right? It's not a proposal. That's a assume that your proposal topic is A, but you in the middle, you decided to change to B. Is that okay? That's okay. We don't care. So proposal and the, the final report will be evaluated or graded separately. Not going to be, you, you don't need to stick with the idea that you proposed. These two okay. projects are separate. And most of students still using the same topic. Most of the students, I would say, right? That makes sense. But if you don't follow the same uh, project, it's fine. I don't care. I don't get that point because of switch of idea. Yeah? Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that, that sounds good. Okay. So that's that. Any other question? I, I was thinking for maybe my project, like, may convert, like, you know, something like YAML. Like turn it to like HTML, like a program that can like easily turn like you know language like or like JSON or YAML, with like kind of like a website format, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Would, would that sound good? You think? Or... That's okay. I I'm not expert in that field, but when you present it, we will know, right? Right. So for me, I usually use a go ahead attitude. Just do it. Okay. Okay. As long as you believe that. They are language translation, and you can point it out which part is the translation part. What kind of technology that you learn from this course have been used to the project? That's fine. As long as you can say something related to this course, 
And I think that, okay, that's the le legitimate uh, statement, then it's okay. If you, okay. Design, if you design me a game and nothing to do with our language translation, I would say, no, that's not related. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So the guidelines are very simple. Just related, have some sort of language translation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Any other question? Well, I think that's all for now. Okay. Anyway, uh, this is a Monday because uh, let me go back to the our course share. Okay. So all of the project guideline and also the instruction material, like a video of every week, the instruction material, like uh the topic is all in here, okay? So each video I say, I would say more than two or three hours, okay? So it's all super, super long. So on Monday, I don't teach it again. If you want the lecture, you come to here to see the recording. So Monday morning, or, or, or Monday noon time, or your central time, usually is for discussion. You, you have some sort of question you want to discuss, then, we will help you solve the problem. You know what I'm saying? So okay. mostly Monday is for that. If for the teaching part, you go to look at the lecture and download the slices and you also need to study the textbook, okay? Monday okay. will be safe, especially for the discussion because we want to use our time efficiently. So come here and then if you have problem with uh, the some idea in the lecture or you need me to explain something or you need me to give you some suggestion, uh, Monday is the time to discuss it. Uh, in addition to that, if in the middle, you want to contact me through email or my Facebook messenger. My Facebook messenger, there are quite many students uh, will sign up, okay? So this one, you go to the Facebook, and then slash Dr. Every Chow. Okay, every year, this one I have a website, and then uh, many students add me as a, as a friend, and then uh, give me the real time question. That that is the fastest way to reach me. Okay, you can send me email, but email usually maybe I I look at it two days or three days later because. I'm not a full-time professor at Louis, I'm just part-time. So I don't read, the e I have other email to read, okay? So I may not read it uh, in a way that you expect me to respond right away. So the practice way to reach me, usually is you make a phone call or you actually reach me by the messenger uh, text. Is that okay? Yeah. Then yeah, I yeah, I remember, yeah, I saw the... Yeah, and then I will actually uh, answer the question within a day. I'll guarantee within a day. If you okay. go through the Facebook Messenger. Okay? Okay. And then yeah. other, other than that, every scene I think I try to be very complete. Um, the, every week they are divided uh, according to the material that uh, even is distributed for the material that we are going to cover. Okay, so that is the course issue. So if someone who cannot find the resource uh, still can ask me, I'll tell you where is the syllabus, where is the project, where is the anything that you need, okay? Is that okay, okay. so far? Yeah, 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 I saw the syllabus video. Yeah, I, 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 don't, yeah. I remember seeing this, yeah. And one more thing, if you work on a project earlier than the due date, is that okay? That's okay. Two weeks earlier, is that okay? That's also okay. If you want to finish the whole semester within eight weeks, that's also okay. I don't care. You know okay. And if you are late, say some for some reason, you somebody just are not lucky and then have a traffic, uh, uh, have a, an accident, car accident, and you say that I have to be late for three weeks. Let me know. I will not deduct your point. Okay. And then and then anything you submit before the end of the course will be acceptable. Okay. So what is 
do I mean by the end of the course? The last day. It is the last day of the course. So if it's May 12th, May, okay, let me bring up the Google Calendar. I'm sorry. The Microsoft Calendar, I cannot see. Let me bring up the Google Calendar. So, uh, let me change it to monthly view. Okay. So go to May. So May, I believe that May 11, Saturday is the last day that uh, what the uh, school Louis decided as the last day of the semester. Okay. My due day, final, final, final due day, you submit, I still accept everything. Is the Sunday, 11 59 p.m. So the midnight of the Sunday, before okay. this time, before this time, everything will be accepted. Even 10 weeks late will be accepted. Even though more than two plus weeks, I may have a minor deduction, but any day submission still be accepted before this time of the last day. Okay? Central time. Don't pick a Pacific time, okay? That would be the the very, very, very due uh, last due date. If you pass it, I'm not going to grade it, okay? This is a 100, 200% sure rule, won't change, okay? Okay. Uh, the reason why I need that is because that usually the university require me to submit the final grade 8 a.m. of the following Tuesday. I have been teaching here many years. So we are required to submit the grade report at that time, central time. So I don't have time to finish grading this day. So I need to use a Monday to get the final grade. So I wish students can finish before the midnight of the, after the Sunday. Okay. Okay. Then I have one day to uh, do final grading and also tabulation of everything. And then Tuesday morning, before Tuesday morning, I need to submit the final grade for all students. So you come in late, I don't grade it. Okay. If you submit on Monday, I'm not going to grade it. If you are late by 10 weeks, but still before the end of the semester, I guarantee you, you will get some grade, okay? Okay. Even though some people more than two weeks, I may give them minor deduction, but not significant deduction, okay? And okay. as for the final grade, you sum up all of the quizzes scores, all of the project score, divided by the total base point. Okay? And then the percentage will tell you what kind of grade you, will, you should get. And the whole course, the whole uh, class, I may add some curving point. Okay, this curving point, would be depending on the whole class's attendance of this uh, Monday uh, Monday meeting or homework or uh, asking questions directly. Okay. Okay. And this extra point, curving point, is not part of the base point, not included. So this is extra. Okay, to boost up your grade. And usually, I would say usually. I control the A grade to be between one third to two thirds of the student. Okay, and then the rest of them may be B or C. So I have the experience, usually if you go under two thirds, that's too strict, okay? Over two thirds, some students don't submit a uh, homework, still get the A, that doesn't make sense, right? Right. So I use my curve point to curve to 
final result to be within this range, usually. But if everybody submit homework uh, and also working hard, it is okay that the whole class to get A, okay? Okay. okay. Any question? That's good. Yeah, I also saw in the syllabus, um, like we're not allowed to, we can only use like PCs to do our projects, so we can't use like Mac. You can use Mac, but you need to submit the Python file, the PY file for me. Okay. Okay, and the PDF if it's a written format. It's okay, but don't give me a website for me to look at your code. I don't have time to do that. You know what I'm saying? Some people oh. use a website editor and interpreter. Now we cannot do that. Uh, and oh. also, also don't send me something like uh, uh, the iPython uh, a notebook. The Jupyter book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jupyter book. No, I don't. I don't take that. Okay. So that's, not pro that's not programming. That's not programming. That's actually is taking notes. Okay. So I can use Mac as long as I just submit like the, the PY file. file. Yeah, the PY file is acceptable. Okay. That's, this that's language, there is a chapter you need to work on the scheme language. And there is a scheme interpreter you can download, but you can find them in the video. Okay. That's a chapter nine or 10. There's a one uh, scheme language you need. Other than that, mostly Python. That, that, that scheme language as. Yeah, C yeah, yeah. Okay. Language, yeah. Okay. That sounds good. And that's any other question? I think I'm good for now. Okay. If no other question, I'm going to briefly go through chapter one to highlight some idea, and then that's it for today. Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. Uh, usually, we don't have the time to go over the whole course. That is too much. Okay, we cannot do it in one hour or two hour for uh, uh, this kind of the large uh, lectures. You you can check my uh, my my recorded session. Everyone every single lecture is like three hour or four hour video. Okay. Yeah, I I did see this recording on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, let's get started. Okay. So, because we are ch teaching you language translation, structure and interpretation of computer programs, so the chapter one we introduce to you what are the languages and also what is language translation. Okay, this is the main purpose of this course, at least the chapter. So we do talk about high level, low level and uh, machine language. Okay, I think everybody knows this. So. And then machine call, and then assembly. Okay, and then there are tons of different programming language uh, in the market. Some programming language course teach twenty language. We are not because we don't have time to teach so many languages. That's one thing. Second, we want to focus on language features, not language variety themselves. Is that okay? That's good. So language features means that we teach you object-oriented programming language in Python. We teach you functional programming in Python. We also teach you imperative programming in Python. So Python is chosen because it's, it is rich in the language features. So almost every feature that people discuss for programming language, Python has some sort of support in there, okay? So the core, because that uh, some language, programming language called do cover different language, and here we focus on the feature. So later when you look, uh, study other language, you will be able to understand the features, okay? And we have a different primary tree of the language, okay, anyway. And then, different, uh, different uh, stage of the languages. Okay, anyways, this part just try to introduce you the different programming paradigm, declarative, imperative, okay? So Python is a language that support functional programming, object-oriented programming, 
in imperative programming. Okay, everything, everything, almost everything. So that's why we choose Python as the main language that we study. And in this course, we teach you three paradigms, imperative paradigm, functional programming paradigm, and the object-oriented programming paradigm. Are you okay with these different terms? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So I don't go into the detail of this uh, introduction of each paradigm, okay? Let's go a little bit faster. Okay, this is okay. Then next second topic is the interpretation of the programming computer program. So there are three style, mainly the compilation. Interpreter and, then, and hybrid. Yeah, and interpreter and the hybrid, yes. And these are three languages are compiler is C C double plus, hybrid is Java, and the Python is interpreter based. Okay, so this is three languages. Usually, when we teach high school kid, I want them to be ready for all of these. Okay, so interpreter is like you do a question and answer. You do question, interpreter provide answer. Okay, and compiler is different. Compiler is the whole page translation. Okay, so these are the difference. And compiler usually is faster. Interpreter is slower, but uh, more flexible, okay? Hybrid is for some language like Java. So you do a compilation to com com compile Java to intermediate code. We call it bytecode in, in Java, okay? Then the bytecode got run by Java virtual machine. And there are 200 different languages that can be translated to bytecode, Java bytecode, and then run on Java virtual machine. Okay, there are 200 different languages. Okay, anyway, uh, these are the different translation scheme. And then the next one is to know about the compilation strategy. Okay, there are several strategies, so uh, we don't talk about detail there. And then next one is, uh, Okay, so, so Java usually is a just in time compilation. Okay. Your bytecode will be uh, compiled to machine code. Okay. At the wrong time. We call it just in time translation. Okay, anyway, programming learning is fine. Then we talk about the six stages of the compilation. Okay, you need to memorize every single one of them. Because uh, the first few chapter we talk about different programming paradigm, but the last six chapter are covering these different stages here. Okay, it's doing language translation. So here we have the explanation of each step, what they are. Okay, and you learn the technique of designing something in different stage you will be able to do the translation uh, for different language later. Okay, so that's, this is about our chapter one. Okay, any questions so far? I'm good. Okay, uh, and eventually you need to know about the design phases of the Compiler. So first you do lexical analysis. So we could talk about tokenization first. So initially we you have if as a soon that you do have a program and you have an if, okay, parenthesis A equals C. Then the first step, lexical analysis, you would do tokenization, token tokenize our list as each one of the token. Okay. Second stage, do passing into passing tree, and then you do backend evaluation or language translation later. Okay. So these are different stages of the translation, and then these are the flow of using a compiler. Compiler we call it yet and deck. Okay, 
compiler compiler. So compiler compiler is usually flex and Python. Flex is sometimes also called uh, Lex. Python sometimes also called Yik. Okay, and you automatically generate parser and scanner. Okay. Okay. So I think this is wrong. This is scanner. This is a parser. Okay. For some reason, the slice maker uh, make a mistake there. So we do have an introduction uh, of the Python and Flex. Uh, you can see that in the in the older video. Every year's backup video is in the course. Okay, so I introduced the Python system. Uh, you go down here, it's the 2017 or 18 here. I do have the explanation of the Python. Okay, you go to put there and you'll find some video covering the language in Python. Okay, it's okay. seven, sixteen, uh, uh, 2017 or 18. Uh, we do cover it, okay? And right now, I don't have time to redo it again, okay? But you do have a video that you can watch. Okay, that's actually Python. So that's the end of the first chapter. Is that okay so far? Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so first chapter is just a introduction, okay? And then starting from chapter two, the, the second week, we start to look at the language features. So first one is the memory model. Every language has a memory model and data type, okay? So this one is this week's uh, homework. You need to study, look in the video I have, and then I'll discuss next week. Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, if no other question, that's it for today. Okay? All right, sounds good. Yeah, thank yeah, you for your see time. You, see you next time, okay? Bye-bye. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.